what you need. online. So uh, today is Trinity Sunday, which is one of the seven principal feast days of the Christian year. So more on that in my, uh, my sermon. Uh, <clears throat> there are also a whole bunch of things that are going to happen, I hope, right after the service today. So I'll start with this one. I've got to go get on an airplane. And so I'm going to bless, and then I'm going to walk out, and I'm just going to keep walking to my car and drive to the airport, because it's, uh, my flight is at 12.50 today, and I'm an anxious traveler. Uh, that's one thing that's going to happen. A second thing is a group of us are going to go over, a group of us, but not me, are going to go over to Church Without Walls. And so we are going to bless some food as a symbol of, of the food that we give away at Church Without Walls, and, and others will do, and Terry will lead that service, and I'm grateful to that. A third thing that will happen, I hope, is that uh, we do have our veterans meal on Tuesday. So spread that word. But if you could help out after this service, if you don't mind moving the kneelers, and I think it's just really on this side. Is that correct, Lenny? So if folks don't mind helping to move the kneelers to the side, that would be a great help for, um, for getting ready for that meal. And then the last thing that I hope some folks will do after this service is to sign up for our newcomers' breakfast and or our picnic. So two weeks from yesterday, we'll have our newcomers' breakfast. And uh, really, everybody's kind of welcome, but we, and we especially, if you've got friends who want to come, that'd be great. It's for people who would like to learn more about the church, and so that you can self-select on that, and we'll have some others who are, um, who are there to help. So you can sign up for that, and then our church picnic is uh, January, June 25, and uh, so you can sign up to come, and if you don't mind bringing something, you can sign up to bring something. And uh, Joe is the one to see about all that. So that's all stuff that's happening today. Just uh, two other quick things to, uh, to add to that. Uh, we are going to restart our dominoes game, which is good news and a lot of fun. 
times. I think in the bulletin it says we're going to restart that on the second and fourth Mondays <coughs> of the month. But to accommodate somebody who was eager to play but couldn't make it on Mondays, we're going to shift that to the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month. And so you'll see that going forward. And then uh, another thing, a late addition, just so it didn't make the bulletin, is on, on June 18, which is Father's Day, between the services, we'll have a meeting for anybody who's, who is or is interested in becoming a Eucharistic visitor. And we'll talk about what that means, and we'll also think about how, how to do our work together this summer. Um, and that's, so that'll be at 9 o'clock. Anything else to say before we begin? Our service will begin in just a moment. Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number 47. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 6. 1, 2, and 6, and 47. continues on the screen and also on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, that's page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the praise song. The praise song is in your dark blue hymnals. 366 in your dark blue hymnals. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. together the contemporary version of the collect on the insert and also on the screen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty 
to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Hello. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, in which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, <coughs> and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. 
God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree with seed and its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next we'll do... Psalm 8, and uh, please uh, recite it, uh, or, uh, yes, recite it responsibly by full verse, and I will start. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. How the mouths, infants, and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adored him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. Put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord our God, how exalted is your name in all the world. The next reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be this, all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Lord to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so, uh, so as I mentioned, today is Trinity Sunday, one of the great holy days, one of the great feast days of the entire Christian year. And as, uh, as many of you may remember, two weeks ago, Terry made a promise about what was going to happen on this day. Terry promised that the entire mystery of the Trinity was going to be made clear. Now that's not going to happen right now, I'm going to say. And of course, I'd love to stick around at coffee hour, but I've got to go. But Terry will be here. And so, have at it. The, uh, no, actually, I really, I, I did have a kind of uh, a revelation in the last few weeks about this day. So I have historically thought of, of Trinity Sunday as the day where the preacher is supposed to do his best or her best to, to explain the nature of the Trinity. Now, it's a great mystery, so nobody really ever thinks you're going to understand it in full, but I thought that's, that's what the job of the preacher is because the Trinity Sunday is uniquely it's the only day in the entire Christian year dedicated to a doctrine, to an idea about God. And what struck me in this last couple of weeks, this, this seems kind of obvious, should have struck me many years before, is that today, Trinity Sunday, is not about the idea of the Trinity. It's about the, the reality of the Trinity. Today is not about ideas about God. Today is about God, about who God is, the God that we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. And that's why this day is put on this week. So if you think about where we have been in recent, in the last few months, in terms of the, the Christian year, we spent seven weeks celebrating Easter, the Easter season. That's all about the resurrection of Christ, of course. That's really foregrounds the second person of the Trinity, right? the Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, who becomes incarnate in the Virgin Mary, who dies and rises again for us in our salvation, and then who ascends back into heaven to return to that sort of clear unity with the Father. All about the second person. <clears throat> Last week, we, began, we had celebrated Pentecost and began the Pentecost season. And Pentecost is all about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who on that day 2,000 years ago came onto the disciples with this mighty power and and birthed the church and brought the people together as the one body of Christ and filled them with gifts and empowered them to go out into the world making disciples of all nations and that gift continues from then right up until today. And that's all about the third person of the Trinity. And having just gone through and talked about the second person of the Trinity in Easter and the third person of the Trinity on Pentecost Today we focus on the Trinity itself, or it's hard to say, himself, themselves. We focus on, on the reality of the Trinity and this reminder that God, who we do know as discrete persons, we know God as the Father, and we know God as the Son, and we know God as the Holy Spirit, but the God that we know as three persons is still one God. And that makes today this reminder that the God that we have been celebrating in distinct persons is one. And today is a day about the unity of 
the divine nature in three persons. Now, that's still pretty abstract and pretty hard. But here's where it begins to become important. We are created in the image and likeness of God. Oh, we should just pause and have a little sympathy for Renee, who did the longest reading of the entire Christian year. Right. But somewhere in there, as you might have noticed, it does remind us that we are created in God's own image and likeness. And so what does that tell us to think about God as three persons perfectly united? What does that tell us about who we are and who we are called to be? We who are, of course, separate persons, but who are called to unity. So we can think about how we experience unity with other people in our own lives. The obvious one for me to start with is Carrie. So Carrie and I got married on August 1, 1992. Shockingly, that's nearly 31 years ago. And on that day, on August 1st, 1992, Carrie and I became one flesh. Except it was kind of imperfect unity, as it turns out, as we have experienced it. It turns out that, that although she and I were merged into one flesh, I remain my kind of selfish, jerky human individual. And so I, I was very focused as we married on my own wants and needs. And sometimes I was focused on my wants and needs to the detriment of her wants and needs or to the detriment of our relationship as a couple. Sad to say, that is still true today. <laughs> but, and this is the part that I want to focus on, not the, not the bad, I want to focus on this part. I've gotten better. A little bit. <laughs> and so we who became one flesh on August 1, 1992, but very imperfectly, have over time, slowly, gradually, still very imperfectly, become more one fleshy. And so just as a way I experienced this, I still think about my own wants and needs a lot, probably more than I should. But I do also think about us as a couple. I recognize that there is a level at which we are a unit. And what is good for one is good for the other. And what is bad for one is bad for the other. That we really are united. And so here's some things I can say about my experience with Carrie. I suspect all of you can say the same for whoever you want to think about. We do experience genuine unity. But imperfectly. But with the capacity over time to get better. And then here's what we say as Christians. When we remember the Trinity, God, three persons perfectly united, and that we're created in God's image and likeness, and that we're headed to God's kingdom, we're going to continue to be brought together. And Carrie and I will never be perfectly united in this lifetime, of course. But we will be perfectly united in God's kingdom. That is our destiny. That's a beautiful thing to remember, especially when we're divided. And then you can keep thinking about the same kind of thing in at, at every level. So how about church? Well, we come together as separate people. And we come together and the Holy Spirit swirls around and brings us together and we become one body. Christ body. United with each other. Except, just like me entering my marriage, we bring with us the whole person. All the strengths and the weaknesses, the gifts, the spiritual gifts from God, and the capacity for love and service and self-sacrifice, that's all part of it. And our selfishness, our struggles, our weaknesses. And so we come together as one, and we experience that unity. We experience that unity especially in worship as we gather around the altar for the sacrament of Holy Communion, of communion being one. But it's imperfect. And so we pray that God will help us to unite with each other and with God a little better over time. And on this day, on Trinity Sunday, we remember again, God, three persons in one nature, perfect unity. That, that is who we are created to be, and that is our destiny. And in the kingdom of God, the body of Christ will in fact be perfectly united. You think about that in more secular context, think about our nation. Here's a newsflash. We're experiencing some divisions in our nation. But here's what we know. This is the secular longing that reflects, I think, that, that created nature that we all have. That sense that we want to be the United States. 
in that sense that we were created, this is from the Constitution, over time to establish a more perfect union. And with the motto, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. And so we have even in that secular kind of political context, that longing for unity. And we experience brokenness, and yet the unity is real. And we recognize at some level that we are all in this together, and that we are all committed to common ideals. And we may have differences about how that plays out. But we are one nation under God. And then you think about it at the biggest level of all, so we're back to uh, poor Renee's long reading that we, with which we began. God creates all things, not just human beings. And God creates all things and calls them very good. And then creation itself gets warped and distorted and broken by human sin. But Paul tells us, all things hold together in Christ. And through his blood of the cross, Christ is reconciling to God all things. And we look forward in hope to that time when all of creation is renewed and restored and brought back into balance and all parts of creation, including us, are united with each other and with all of God's creation and with God. That's where we're headed. And that's the longing that we have in our heart. And that's our struggle and our calling as Christian people to speak for that unity and to work for that unity. And so here's what I would invite you to do this week. <clears throat> signs of division are all around us. But look for signs of unity. And, and then I would encourage you to think about some one person from whom you are divided. And for most of us, that's probably going to be somebody in our family or somebody who we work with or a neighbor or whatever. But it could be bigger than that. It could be a, a, a national or international figure. You know, somebody that that makes you crazy. And pray for that person. And ask God to touch your heart. And ask God to help you feel and experience a little bit more unity going forward. And if it's, you know, Putin, that's just going to have to be an internal change. But if it's somebody in your actual life, if you can, do, do one little thing to make that unity a little bit more real and visible. I invite you to do that as, as one foretaste of the kingdom of God as we move towards that time when we will be perfectly united with each other and we will truly reflect God's image and likeness, God who is three and God who is one. And I invite you to do that in the name of Jesus Christ, but also in the name of the Father and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now please stand as you are able, and let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which begins on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, and I think is also on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the people.
prayers of the people, form five, from the Book of Common Prayer on page 389. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the diocese of the extra-provincial churches, from the Anglican cycle of prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Doug, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those on our diocesan cycle of prayer. Christ Memorial Church, North Brookfield, the Budget and Finance Committee, the National Cathedral Association, Action Center Tutoring Services, Acts, in Springfield. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world and a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Today we pray especially for Peru, Philippines, Poland, and Portugal from the world cycle of prayer. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, excuse me, persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. We pray for those on our parish prayer cycle. Virginia Ventilet in our choir. The Boissonneaux, Jeff and Jamie Bouchard. Jane and Aaron Bouchard. For all who have committed themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbor, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray especially for those on our prayer list. Kim Astacio and Lindsay for healing of breast cancer. Jane, that God's will be done. Joe, Diane, and the Hansons for recovery and strength. Kevin, Elaine, Alicia, and Heather for guidance and strength. Jude, Emily, Katie, Mina, and Dick for successful cancer treatments. Mary, Jude, and Alicia for strength and a successful procedure. Linda, Linda, Helene, and Norm for recovery from procedures. Ken for healing in his eye. Care and comfort for Betty, the Kahn family, and the two Lewis families. The Ukrainian people for comfort. Uh, Michael, Miranda, and family of Andrew uh, in their grief. And all victims of violence. For uh, Thanksgiving, for our fabulous coffee, our hosts, we pray and thank you. We also pray for the flowers adorning our altar and the sanctuary candle that are given to the glory of God. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have a rest, they must have a rest that place where there 
is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Rejoining in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed David, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ, our God. To you, O Lord, our God. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. In what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Keep you in eternal life. Please stand as you're able for the peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet one another. Peace, 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 peace. This way back in the choir. Peace, 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 peace. And after you've had a chance to greet folks, uh, have a seat while Terry sets the table. Number 362. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 362.
Before we turn to the great Thanksgiving today, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to pray over this week? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Now, they continue with the great Thanksgiving, Eucharistic Prayer A, and that begins on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. Again, page 361, Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ Christ is is risen, Christ Christ will will come come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. 
and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! Jesus, Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer. gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
And now please stand as you're able and let us pray together the post-communion prayer, which is on the screen and on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please turn in your dark blue hymnals to number 531. 531. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. 